Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to our Tuesday night midweek men's gathering. Uh, opening night here, so really excited about the, the next season. Uh, I wanted to uh, begin tonight welcoming you into each location where you may find yourselves. Uh, there's an online location out there. Ryan, thanks for hosting that. And we've got five physical locations at the moment where you might be gathered. So welcome to uh, each of those places. I'm uh, really thankful for each of the, each of the men that, that opened up their home or their barn in some cases uh, to invite men to come on a weekly basis. I wanted to begin tonight by, number one, welcoming you and just kind of going over an initial format of what this thing's going to look like over the next uh, se several weeks. So I, uh, how we're going to begin is we're going to plug into this online uh, streaming uh, video. All of the groups, all of the locations are, are looking at the video you're watching right now. Uh, my commitment to you is to keep it shorter than we have typically done on uh, Tuesday nights maybe. Um, I know people at this point, if you're anything like me, quite honestly, are sick of looking at screens. <laughs> uh, and you guys are right now around tables or a room uh, facing each other. So I want to capitalize on that and I want to optimize that. I want to celebrate that. So it's gonna, it might be a little bit tough for me or some of the other guys that I'll that be teaching to keep it tighter, but that's my commitment to you. I got a stopwatch going right here, and right now we're, we are going through the book of Colossians this season. Uh, my commitment to you is to keep it to like 15 minutes tops on the screen, and that might be a struggle at times because there's some awesome stuff in this word that we're going to want to uh, drill down on, but that's, I'm going to leave that to you guys at the tables, to you guys at, at the physical locations to do that. The, the leaders, the facilitators there have been equipped uh, they, they've looked at this text uh, ahead of time. Hopefully you guys have too. So I'm prepared tonight to get into a couple verses of Colossians, uh, but maybe we can't. Maybe we'll just do this format, a little bit of uh, uh, expectations and an overview of the book in general. And if, if we have time to get into the first couple verses, we will. But I'll stop it short. I'm, I'm more concerned about uh, honoring your time than uh, getting through my personal uh, uh, agenda. So we're going to start with a video like that, and then uh, we'll have some discussion and questions and just time for you guys to do some some face-to-face -face and uh, an intimate, you know, spend the rest of the time. Uh, I would encourage each, each one of you guys to be praying uh, for each other, uh, for what God would do through this season, um, to develop bonds and strengthen relationships uh, amongst each other. The um, the the you guys are there because most likely you've registered somehow. So we're trying to keep this tight uh, to honor the uh, indoor gathering limitations. So, uh, so you're registered, and we want to try to make this as consistent as possible. So maybe you've showed up to a place, and after this week or next week, you might find out, hey, you know what, I heard this thing happening on the other side of town, or maybe some people might uh, fit my personality or demographic a little bit better. Listen, the seat you're sitting in right now, uh, you're not married to it. So if, if you want to try another group, feel free to do that. Uh, no offense, I'm kind of speaking for the leaders there, and, and hopefully you guys feel that way. But I would encourage you guys to stay as consistent and tight as possible because uh, relationships and accountability and vulnerability and walls kind of come down a little bit more over time. So if we get, you know, if we're juggling seats all the time, it's hard for people to kind of get comfortable. So I would encourage you to be uh, consistent uh, find a spot and, and hang out. Maybe that's not in the, the seat you're in now. If not, that's okay. Maybe it is. Uh, a couple things that we always like to start with are just some ground rules, some, you know, some formatting. And uh, listen, hopefully uh, some things over time are shared amongst you guys that uh, you don't necessarily want out there on Facebook, or you don't necessarily want out there in the Sunday Bulletin, or you don't want uh, out there. Let's so so guys, let's uh, let's honor the discretion of the group that encourages dialogue. It encourages people to uh, uh, to bring personal things, and that's what we want. We want to be personal um, with each other. We want to be open. We want to be honest. We want to be vulnerable. We want to be 
teachable, and we want to be encouraging to the needs that are presented, uh, that are represented in the room right now. And people might not come in and just gush out uh, all of their deepest, darkest secrets, but over time and as trust is built up, that'll happen. So I encourage everybody to just be uh, discreet what happens in these settings. I encourage you to keep those in the settings, honor the, uh, the, the trust that is built, uh, and it encourages vulnerability. Um, the other thing that you've typically seen on a Tuesday night is testimonies. So uh, we're not going to necessarily be doing video testimonies. We, had, we recorded the audio on our previous Tuesday nights, uh, but we always left the testimony piece out unless there was a specific recommendation to keep it in. Because, again, guys are uh, maybe sharing things on a deep, very personal level that we don't want there, that we don't want that out there online. So testimonies have been a powerful part of this ministry to and for men. And I want to encourage that that continues. And maybe there are testimonies that are happening after the screen turns off and you guys are doing it around the table. Maybe that's the vehicle for it. So I would encourage each one of you leaders to, um, to, to work with the guys. And guys, as you feel led, um, you know, it, it helps us in our own walk to put words to the things that are happening in our lives, what God's done in our lives, how he's changed our lives, how we're challenged and how we fail, all these things. Uh, put them into words. And uh, so, so, so I still want that to be a part of what we do, just maybe in a little bit of a different uh, setting. How long is it going to happen like this, guys? I, I don't know. I'd like to, if I was a gambling man, I'd like to think that we would be back in the building together on Tuesday nights sooner than later. Um, as soon as the opportunity arises, uh, we'll talk about it, and may, maybe you guys like what you have there, and you want to keep it. Hey, go for it. Great. Uh, but we will take the opportunity once we can and gather together uh, in the building again as soon as we're able. So when, we're, when you hear that we're meeting again on Sundays uh, in some sort of capacity, that'll kind of be the trigger, the mechanism to say, hey, the midweek's going to be open as well, as far as I understand it at the moment. So we're just going to ebb and flow and take, the, take this thing as it comes. If it ends up being like this through the whole season up until Christmas, so be it. Uh, if we're doing this for three or four weeks, so be it. Uh, but let's just be a little bit flexible when it comes to that. Listen, I'm really lo I am looking forward to this, uh, to this season. Uh, if you guys are anything like me, it's been, it, it's been challenging, man. It's a, it's been a dry season. I'm looking forward to, to, to being joined and connected again with the, um, with the men of God. That is soul filling, um, for me in a sense. And we have this Tuesday midweek gathering uh, that's out there. You'll see in your uh, emails, and I'll put it on Facebook and Twitter and whatnot, we have an event uh, happening on Saturday, September 26th. So that's in a couple weeks. Uh, it's going to be an outdoor event. We're going to have some uh, food. We're gonna to, I'm, I'm trying to get together like an axe-throwing contest or something, so that'll be real fun. We'll do some outdoor things, and it's just a time for us to gather. Uh, it'll be like, I think it's 5 to 8 or something, so it'll be in the evening, late September. Uh, fire should be just an enchanted evening, and uh, I encourage you guys to register for that. So we have this Tuesday thing happening, that event happening uh, coming up. So I'm really looking forward to connecting with some guys. Um, you know, talking about vulnerability. It's, this has been a spiritually, spiritually dry season for me. I think we've had a, a, an opportunity to kind of retract in our uh, walk and be more reactive than proactive, you know what I mean? But God's gotten a hold of me, let's say, the last four weeks or so and saying, hey, man, come on, let's, let's get this thing together. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. I hope you guys are too. Uh, and and it, this whole thing is, a, as with anything, work, anything you put your hand to, it's a junk in, junk out. If you come and you're just, you know, you get out what you put into it. So one of the things you guys will be talking about tonight is what are your expectations, uh, you know, out of, the, out of this thing? What do you, uh, how do you hope to grow? How do you hope to contribute uh, to these Tuesday nights? Um, so with that, I'm going to kind of get into the, I've just got uh, five or six minutes left here. It uh, looks like we're just going to have time to go through the, the basic overview of Colossians, and we'll probably get into the text starting next week. So uh, as you can see behind me here, we're calling uh, this study. Colossians is a, is a fantastic book coming off of Hebrews 
uh, if you were with us last term, last semester, you know, we talked about the, you know, Christ is over everything. And Colossians carries that theme of the, the, the complete adequacy, uh, how Christ is over all things. And we're calling it the, the tagline, I don't know, hope of glory. If we look at uh, chapter 1, verse 26 and, and 27 here, uh, Paul is ta- it's written by Paul. Uh, and Paul is saying in verse 25, he has become its servant. Who is that? The, the body of Christ. Paul has become the servant of the body of Christ by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. We're going to talk a lot about fullness uh, through this study. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Remember, this is written about 60 A.D., uh, so we're 60 uh, we're only we're very early on in in this Christianity, this just transition from the the Jewish beliefs to the Christian beliefs. Uh, it says to them, uh, to to the Lord's people, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about the the fullness of Christ. Uh, what we what we eventually, what we hope in, what we, you know, faith, it says in Hebrews, is uh, uh, the assurance of things not seen and, and the assurance of what we hope for. Uh, and in Christ, it's the hope of glory, that this is a temporary place that we're in, that there's a, uh, there is a higher uh, plane for us. And we'll see in Colossians chapter 3 that we have to set our hearts and our minds on, on things above. So uh, this, this study is a transcendent study, like Christ is above all things. So, at a high level, uh, who wrote the book? Paul. Uh, Paul writes the book. He writes it from a uh, Roman imprisonment. To the best we can tell, Paul never visited uh, Colossae. And he, it's, it's a town in modern Turkey, right kind of near Laodicea. Those are the, the, those are the more uh, glittery towns. And uh, Colossae is, you know, maybe more of a Midwestern town compared to New York, if you will. Uh, so, but, but uh, Epaphras, I believe, uh, the, that's how you would pronounce that, during Paul's um, journey, and he had heard the message and taken it back to uh, Colossae. So the best we could tell, Paul never visited, uh, visited this town. And who are the recipients of this letter? We'll see. There's to the believers, to God's holy people, verse 2 in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters of Christ. And we'll get into that a little bit more next week. But the, this letter is written to believers. In Hebrews, we see that the letter, we, sometimes it's addressed to believers and non-believers alike, but this letter is specifically uh, to believers, written again in uh, about 60 A.D., uh, commonly accepted from his first imprisonment. In Rome. So, what's the occasion? Why did he write this letter? Um, so, this uh, this uh, Epaphras right, uh, comes to uh, Paul in Rome and visits Rome as a response to many heretical attacks that were happening in this town. So, Epaphras goes back, starts a church. Uh, the church, you know, it starts pure. And there are things that start to come in and infiltrate the church, and we'll get into what what that is. And it's they're really they're various in nature, nothing like super explicit. But we can see by Paul's statements uh, in opposition to them uh, throughout the letter, much of it being co- you know combining other philosophies in with Christianity and saying, hey, this is great, but let's add a little bit of this, let's add a little dash of that. And, and Paul's saying no, and Epaphras is worried. So he goes to Paul and saying, hey, this is what's going on. And Paul writes this letter in response to that, uh, it, uh, confirming sound doctrine, reassuring who Christ is, reassuring what our response as believers ought to be in response to what Christ has done. Uh, you know, so, so he's writing it in response to heretical attack, what's happening there. Um, in, in Colossae. And the overall theme is very much like Hebrews, the supremacy of Christ, uh, his equality with God, the very fullness of God himself, his transcendence over all things, therefore minimizing everything else. So, so Christ is, we can see something wonderful and, and right in front of us it looks fantastic, but when we look at it and we, in view of Christ, it just becomes that much smaller. Um, ourselves. I'm a mag. I, I'm like 
I'm a pretty fantastic, awesome creature created by the Lord. But when I stand in front of the Grand Canyon, I feel this big. And this is kind of what's happening. Um, Paul is, is raising Christ so high that everything else seems much smaller. So that, that's the, 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 the overall theme. And the practical application of that uh, is in ourselves that, that we have the, that Christ is completely sufficient, completely adequate, that we are, that we are eternally uh, fulfilled in him, resulting in a spiritual life, our, our hearts and minds set on things above, uh, that, that Christ himself is the top of the food chain. Listen, there's nothing else to desire. There's nothing else to want. There's nothing else to chase after. Our complete fullness is found in him. In, verse, uh, in chapter 2, verse 10, I'll end it here uh, because I'm 45 seconds late. But chapter 2, verse 10, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. So guys, we're going to just, we're going to cut it right there. Uh, You guys can discuss a few things here tonight. Listen, there's some very common themes between Colossae and what we have here. Is there anything heretical happening here? Are people sprinkling things into Christianity here? What do we tend to add to Christianity our own selves? So there's lots of opportunity here for you guys to discuss some of these things. We'll, uh, we'll get into verse 1 next week. You guys have a fantastic night. Again, I'm really pumped about this season. Welcome, um, and we'll talk to you guys soon.